Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, we continue talking about units of measurements, and today we will talk about how we measure mass of objects. Well, <coughs> we have already spoken about um, seconds as the unit of time and meters as the unit of lengths. Now, it's it's been a decision actually of physicists um, to use the units of measurements based on certain natural physical constants which do not really depend, the value of which does not depend on whatever we are doing. So it's not supposed to be something artificial, it's supposed to be based on something objective. And that's why we have defined the second, the unit of time, that was the first unit which needed to be defined as the time um, for um, certain atom of cesium um, to make oscillations in certain number. The number was 9... 9192, 631, 770. So, the atom of cesium, if it transforms from one state to another, and the states are supposed to be defined properly, we are not talking about what kind of states, but it's like agitated state and, and normal ground state. So, number of these oscillations is exactly the time uh, which is equal to one second. So we have defined the second, and um, similarly we have defined the unit of measurement as being the distance covered by light in vacuum during 299.72458 of a second. So second is already defined, that's the time which takes the atom of cesium to make this many oscillations and now since second is defined this piece of a second needed to um, for the light and vacuum to cover the distance in one meter so meter is also defined now the logic is to always define the next unit of measurement in terms of some physical constant and already defined, previously defined units. So we have a very strict hierarchical um, uh, kind of construction. So we define something like a second based only on some phenomenon. Then we have defined it length based on some phenomenal and already defined second. And now we will define the unit of mass, which is called kilogram, based on already defined units, uh, time and, and length, and some physical constant. So again, that's the general <coughs> direction. Okay, now let's talk about <coughs> excuse me, how it was actually defined. Well, um, in... Uh, 1889 actually they have de decided to make a standard kilogram now before that um, the unit called gram existed and that was basically the mass of one cubical centimeter of water by the way centimeter is already defined now at least um, but the problem is I mean you can't really have a precise measure based on cubical centimeter of water. Well, it depends on the water, temperature, etc., etc. It's not really constant. <coughs> so, in 1889, they have decided to make a object, a real object, which has a mass of one kilogram, and they did it. Remember how they did the measure, uh, the unit of measurement, the meter. Uh, as, as a metal rod somewhere in the 18th century and put it in some laboratory. Well, later on 
they have decided to get off this particular standard because it's not precise. Same thing with this. They have made kilogram, put it in the same place, the same laboratory near, Fran near Paris, in Sever, I think it's called. And, uh, well, 100 years later, in 20th century, they basically found that um, it's not exactly a kilogram. There are some micrograms difference or something like this. I don't know how they have discovered it, but basically it's obvious that things do change and this standard which we made ourselves cannot really be a real standard. We have to really base it on some physical constant. Now, which one? Now, this is this lecture is kind of more um, difficult to understand than the previous. The previous one with meter, that was kind of easy. Speed of light, measure the time, one fraction, whatever the fraction is of a second, and that's the length covered by the light. With kilogram it was difficult. The first suggestion was, let's measure exactly the mass of one particular atom of silicon 28 I believe well silicon is basically abundant uh, that's sand basically it's a silicon so um, let's take one particular atom and have certain number of these atoms if we know the weight not the weight, the mass of one particular atom, then we can multiply it so many times to have one kilogram. And then we can say, okay, kilogram is the mass of so many atoms of silicon. Quite frankly, for me personally, that would be a very natural understanding of, you know, how we define the kilogram. For some reason, that was rejected by physicists. Maybe one of the reasons is that there are other isoto isotopes of silicon, silicon-29 and silicon-30, with different number of nu 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 uh, neutrons in, uh, in the nucleus. And maybe it's difficult to separate. I don't really know the reason. It was rejected. So, <coughs> they decided to go along, in my personal view, more kind of sophisticated way and they still did I mean they have decided to have some other physical constant not the mass of atom but some other physical constant which maybe was easier to measure reproduce or whatever I'm not really sure why so what is this okay when we were talking about um, waves um, we were talking about the energy the wave carries with it and in particular um, there was a, an effect when the energy was carried in in chunks called photons and the energy of one photon was equal to some kind of a constant called Planck's constant times nu, which is frequency of the wave, electromagnetic wave. So this is a constant, and this constant was calculated as being equal to 6.62607015 times 10 to minus 34 joules times second <coughs> okay so now they have decided that this constant is better suited for definition of the mass well first of all joule what is joule? joule is um, the energy um, measure and it's a kilogram meter second use s second square that's the force times distance right so that's the 
definition of Job. And uh, so basically it's a kilogram here. Now meter we know what meter is, we have already defined meter, and second also we defined properly. Which means that if kilogram is, is defined, then everything is defined and we have this constant. So again, they made the reverse. Let's say that this constant is exactly equals to this particular number, because again, if we start from kilogram as we understand it, we can never have an exact number here. But if we start from the number, this number, we will have the standard which fits this particular number for a kilogram. So that's what the typical process of defining um, the new process of defining the units based on some constant is. So the unit is such that will give exactly this constant as far as the calculations are concerned. So first, this constant was uh, obtained experimentally with whatever units they had at the time, whatever kilogram they have, whatever meter, and whatever second. Now, since we are redefining this from the constant back to the unit, we, ha we are saying, OK, our unit is such that delivers this particular um, number as a Planck's constant. Well, basically that's it. We have to define it, which means we have to know how to, you know, have some experiment which delivers certain things based on this particular Planck's constant, because we have postulated this Planck's constant. So we know exactly what is the energy. If we know the energy, we can find what is the kilogram, basically. What is the mass of whatever we are dealing with. So again, this is a very important philosophical change of defining units, not based on our own kind of definition. I don't know, we have made, made a, an object and say this is a standard. No, we are taking certain constant to be exactly some su such a number, and from this we derive the unit of measurement. Same thing as with time, when we were saying that a certain number of oscillation is equal to one second. Same thing with length, when we were saying that the distance covered by light in one fraction, whatever the fraction is of a second, is the meter. Same thing here. Kilogram is whatever delivers this particular value to the Planck's constant. Now, the relationship between the energy here and the mass is very simple. That's Einstein, Einstein uh, equation in, theory, uh, in relativity theory. So these two, it's quantum physics and this is the theory of relativity. It's all something which is not really covered by this course. I just use the formulas basically as given. It's much more complicated parts of the physics. But anyway, the relationship between H and energy, relationship between energy and mass, and that's how we get the mass unit. Now, if we have defined what is a kilogram, obviously we have gram, which is one thousandth of a kilogram. We have milligram, which is one thousandth of a gram, which is one millionth of a kilogram. We have microgram, which is another thousand, uh, nanogram, which is another thousand, and picogram, which is another thousand of the previous. Every time we just divide it by a thousand. Now going into multiples, we have a ton. By the way, the ton, there is a ton in the United States which is spelled like this. Now this ton is spelled like this. So this is exactly one thousand kilogram. And there is a kiloton, abbreviation is ton, there is a kiloton, there is a megaton, and there is a gigaton. So it's a thousand tons, million tons, and billion tons. All right, so basically that's it about mass. 
uh, again, don't miss the logic of this. First, we define something in time, unit of time, which is a second. Using the second and speed of light, we have defined the lengths. Now, using the second as a unit of time, a meter as a unit of distance, we have defined unit of mass, kilogram, by postulating the Planck's constant. And that's always like this. We always preserve this logical connection. We define something, and then based on this, we define something. It's like proving theorems. We have axioms. Axioms are, in this case, equivalent to world constants, physical constants, natural constants. Then we have derived first kind of set of theorems <coughs> from these axioms, then the theorems from the theorems, etc., etc., by building the logical uh, construction. Here is exactly the same thing. That's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.